I thought that it would be all up from here, you know? We saw Baron in the Secret Island. That movie was, if anything, interesting. This movie, all things considered, does have interesting things, but it feels like we fumble the bag so much. Let's start with the introduction. The Straw Hats are lockpicking a chest, and inside they find a random old lady, who honestly, they just plan on throwing away. I get that, I would too. The old lady, however, offers them a reward if they head to her home, showcasing a new type of log pose called a turtle pose. Because, uh, because it's a turtle. Like a real, living turtle. And honestly, I am not against that idea. It's weird, sure, like it's weird and it kind of goes a little bit against the established story. But also, she's like a weird old lady and even she's not that convinced that this actually works. Plus, I mean, it's so weird and kind of cool. So whatever, they head off into Mecca Island, which sounds cool and I wish it was. It is an island where everything is slightly mechanical. There's people that turn out to be mechanical dolls. There's robot archers and flying ships. And again, it comes very close to breaking what we've established, but it's just short enough to not really push that boundary. Sure, we have planes, but they only really fly for like a minute or two at most before they fall back down. So everything mechanical kind of works, but not really. So everything on the island does have some mechanical components to them, but on the other hand, there's nothing really visual about this island that screams Mecca Island. In fact, the second movie, Clockwork Island, feels way more mechanical than this one. This gets into a little bit of a pattern that I've noticed, which is that the actual canon story itself is willing to do all sorts of unique experimental things. It's willing to showcase things like Water 7, it's willing to showcase Skypea, but then the movies don't try to do anything of similar scale. Instead we get an island that's called Mecha Island, but for the most part, we'll get to that, almost acts like a normal island. Maybe there's one small gimmick on these islands, but it's not too visually different. Even the cast of characters feels this way for me, where some of them I can see being actual characters who would exist in this world, and then there are other characters like the old lady who I, I just feel like we didn't even try. And I know this movie didn't try, because it's where we dive into like my main complaint about this movie. The thing that actually made me pause multiple times, sigh, even stop watching for a while to do literally anything else, and that is fan service. This movie has a lot of blatant fan service. It's bad. Like, Oda is not free from this either. Okay, he knows what he's done. And in this movie, the crew doesn't change any outfits. Kind of. Only Nami and Robin change outfits. Why? Fan service. And the thing is, no other character does it. If all the characters did it, sure, okay, fine, whatever. But only these two characters do it and no one else? This is messed up. Why don't the guys change outfits? Come on, it's not that hard. Okay, whatever. Back to the story. I think the biggest flaw of this movie isn't even the setup. It's more the execution. A lot of the movie revolves around solving puzzles. The crew arrives on a mecha island hoping to find treasure, and for that they need to solve puzzles. I'm okay with that. One Piece itself is technically a puzzle that you need to solve. The problem with these puzzles is that almost everything is a riddle, and every riddle is solved a minute after it's been said. So it doesn't even feel like you should even think of an answer. I stopped caring about what they were saying because I knew that the second they mentioned a riddle, they were going to solve that riddle within a minute of saying it. This happened multiple times. At most, you can just be entertained by the goofiness of the crew as they solve the riddles, and I honestly would have just wanted more of that instead of actually trying to solve puzzles. As they're solving puzzles, they end up meeting Ratchet who built a lot of the mech stuff, and as they solve riddles, they end up awakening a giant turtle which this island is on. I really wanted to like this. It's cool, visually, like don't get me wrong. You think you're gonna find some hidden treasure and then you find weird writings on the wall only to realize that you have reawakened a giant turtle who you are standing on? Conceptually, that is a cool idea, but it didn't feel earned. It just happened. Why does solving this specific riddle wake the turtle up? I think I was just very emotionally drained at this point because for every cool concept, for every cool looking shot, there are 10 shots that feel bland or feel like filler, even within this movie. This is why I say that the biggest flaw isn't even the setup, it is the execution. 
So how does this movie end? Turns out Ratchet is a bad guy who wants to control this giant turtle to take over the world. Which, sure, we establish him to be kind of a bad guy. And so he uses all of his mechanical abilities to grab onto the turtle and force it to move. And so the crew has to stop him and find out that the treasure are the golden eggs that the turtle leaves. And that's how it ends. Again, it had a nice idea to play around with. I felt like we could have done a lot of cool things with this movie, but it feels like this was the first draft, and we didn't try any harder. How is it that this movie summoned a giant turtle, and yet I did not feel invested in a leviathan-sized turtle island? Am I just getting bitter with a lot of these movies? I don't know. Hopefully, you at least enjoyed my suffering.